Hey everyone, as you know, I've put together these courses in Procreate and SketchUp for iPad, and I'm working on one for Morfolio Trace. But I recently put together a kind of weekend workshop sharing my three secrets or my three number one insights about how iPad drawing can make you a better designer. And um, the one I'd like to share with you today is how you can make incredible renderings by hand in two hours or less, even if you don't know how to draw. So, um, Let's take a look at how we created this drawing and um, maybe you can help me keep my secret, okay? Long before Procreate came along, I used to use Photoshop to help me compose my renderings, importing the line drawings I made by hand or in SketchUp into Photoshop, then adding images of people, trees, and cars to create entourage. But Procreate made it possible for me to go a step further and keep the original photos I was importing but smudge them a bit or add a pencil line around the people to make them look even more hand-drawn, and that saved me even more time. From there, it was only a short leap to importing photos of existing rooms or Google Street View images, then retouching the photos themselves to serve as the background of the new rendering, eliminating the need to render the context by hand. But the images of furniture I imported into these backgrounds couldn't always be found at the right size or posed at the right view angle, so I started playing around with the selection and transformation tools to alter their perspective when needed, and this saved even more time. Then one day I made a video where I used Procreate to modify a photo of a sofa to fit the perspective angle of an interior rendering, and that video became one of my most watched videos, and that made me wonder if I should push the limits even more and come up with a strategy to make renderings in Procreate that looked like they were made by hand, but without the need to do any drawing at all. So that's what I did. The first step of this strategy is to start with the best photo you can find of the interior space or the outdoor setting of the building, taken from the same angle as the final rendering you have in mind. In the case of interior renderings, if a photo of the actual room is not available, you can use a photo of a room similar in size, import it, retouch it to remove its contents, and smooth over the surfaces of the floors, walls, and ceilings, resulting in a blank background with the same proportions as the design you wish to render. Now that you have the background ready, you can turn your attention to the new design that goes inside it. The second step of the strategy is to search the internet for images of the entourage or furniture you'll be using in the rendering. Photograph from as close as possible to the angle needed. Once the images are imported and the backgrounds removed, the individual pieces can be moved and transformed to fit the composition, and the transformation and adjustments tool can be used to deconstruct and reassemble any images that happen to be at the wrong angle. And just to be sure I wasn't fooling myself that this process actually worked, I used this same job of mine to create a draw-along exercise from my UCLA class to see if the students could make the same rendering in three hours or less. And here's a first example from one of my students, an industrial designer who wanted to add iPad drawing to his workflow. And here again is an example from one of my students who was an interior designer. And again, this drawing was done in about two to three hours. And the same exercise by a student in the class who was a landscape architect. And again, all of these drawings are part collage and part painting, all done in less than three hours. So you can see it not only looks good, but it's a fast technique. And some of my students preferred a more hand-drawn technique, as in the case of this rendering of a bedroom from one of the set designers in the class, using the same hybrid technique renderings, but on a different room. We also practiced the technique on a series of isolated images where we took something out of the 3D warehouse in SketchUp, exported it as a line drawing, and then created a realistic effect with just three layers. A single color for the base layer, in this case terracotta, then a second layer for some detail on top of that color, and then a third layer for shade and highlights. And none of these students would have claimed to be particularly good at drawing when they first signed up for my class, but by applying themselves, they were all able to master Procreate in minutes to produce these stunning renderings and vignettes. So you can see I'm not making it up when I tell you that Procreate, with a little guidance from yours truly, can help anyone make beautiful plans, elevations, and perspective renderings by hand even if you don't know how to draw. If you are interested in other ways to make quick, beautiful renderings with Procreate using SketchUp, check out the video you see up here now. And don't forget to check the description below for links to the courses that I teach and to the digital tools that can help you use Procreate and become an even better designer. And I'll see you in the next video.